The virtual yellow line in NFL broadcasts is great. It tells viewers how far the offense needs to advance for a first down. It looks really simple and elegant, but creating that line was a massive engineering challenge. It started in the mid-90s when the Fox Sports Network tried to make hockey easier to watch. Scientists at Fox Sports Laboratories are working on new technology. You won't believe your eyes. They embedded infrared transmitters inside the puck and placed sensors around the rink so that live TV viewers saw a blue glow around the puck at all times and a red comet tail if it traveled over 70 miles per hour. Hockey fans didn't really embrace glow puck as it came to be known. So the technology was retired when the broadcasting rights for hockey switched to ABC a few years later. But the team of engineers that they had assembled for the project was just getting started. They left Fox Sports to create a new company called Sport Vision. And in 1998, they debuted the first and 10 line on ESPN. Until now, this marker was the only reference fans in the stadium and at home watching on TV had for the first down. The key challenge in making the yellow line is that the scene is constantly changing, which means that the yellow line has to constantly change. Not only are there three different cameras used for wide shots of the field, each camera pans, tilts, and zooms to follow the action. So the first thing Sport Vision does before the game is create a 3D mathematical model of each football field using laser surveying tools. And during the game, they gather data from the cameras about their pan, tilt, and zoom positions for every single frame. So when the operator specifies that the first down is at the 43-yard line, for example, the computers combine the camera data with their own model of the field to draw the yellow line in the proper perspective and to redraw it for every frame being broadcast to viewers. The final step is what makes the line kind of magical, and that's removing any part of the line that's obstructed by players, refs, or the ball so that the line looks like it's underneath them, almost painted on the field. The way the computers know which pixels to remove is by sampling the colors. Think of the field as a giant green screen, but anyone who has worked with green or blue screens knows that you need a really uniform and evenly lit background for it to work well. So Sport Vision identifies in advance which shades of green and brown are in the field given the lighting conditions of the day. Those are the colors to be covered by the yellow line, and they identify which colors are in the player's uniforms and should never be covered by yellow. It works amazingly well. Here's the Packers wearing green in the rain. No problem. It only fails in the most extreme weather, like this 2013 game in Philly. The line ends up all over the players, but on the other hand, the system was helpfully used to insert the yardage numbers that had been covered up with snow. The whole yellow line process delays the live broadcast by less than a second. And not surprisingly, it was an immediate success. Sport Vision won an Emmy for it and went on to make virtual visual aids for NASCAR, baseball, sailing, and the Olympics. And football broadcasts have since added more graphics, like the line of scrimmage and the perhaps unnecessary large arrows that show some of the same information that's in the score box. But if that's annoying, consider this. This type of technology is being used to insert ads into stadiums and onto fields for a lot of different sports broadcasts. But the NFL doesn't allow it. In the grand tradition of the yellow line, the graphics on the field are not there to sell you things, but to help you follow the game. Fox Sports is eliminating the computer-generated first and 10 line from its NFL coverage as part of its cost-cutting efforts. This is a news report from September 2001, 15 years ago. The line at that time cost $25,000 per game to make, and so Fox Sports thought it could save some money by cutting it out, but there was a bit of an outcry from fans. Sport Vision set up this website, Love the Line, and gathered comments from viewers. There's a couple of good ones here. Anonymous says, quote, I need the line, everyone needs the line. And here's one from Bob Burns. I'm a 75-year-old fan of football, and the line is the best thing you came up with since Color TV. So this is a news report from just about a month later. 